It's going to be amazing. Beyond comprehension. Finally, the MMO of all MMOs. It's got gameplay. It's got complexity. It's got a team of dedicated masochist devs who are actually in love with this genre. This is it. I feel it. This is the one. You know, I heard this game is actually so good that it's going to bring back your dad from that gas station where he went to go buy a pack of smokes all those years ago. It's so good. It's going to do all your laundry. And while you're playing it, it'll even suck your dashes of creation. The goat, or it's supposed to be when it's released in 2050. This MMO, more than any other, aside from maybe Riot's one that we still don't have a name for, needs a hype check. And who better to give it one than the guy who's never been overhyped for anything before? ever. Now if you've seen almost any other video out there about Ashes of Creation so far, you probably know that this game looks like it's about to dominate the MMO space more than anything else in recent history. By all measures, you're going to hit a few buttons on your keyboard after logging in and just immediately start uncontrollably ejaculating over everything in front of you. So let's be the bearer of bad news and bring those expectations down a notch to something a little bit more reasonable. From all the updates we've seen so far, all the gameplay and development, I well and truly believe that if this game manages to hit 80%, of what it's aiming to be, it'll probably be an amazing game. But interestingly enough, if they only manage to hit 80% of what they're planning to be, well then the MMO community is just gonna be very disappointed in them. You may be asking why that's the case, and it's mostly because some members of the MMO community who really want this game to work out are dangerously close to falling into the hype trap and just taking the rest of us with them. You see, hype, much like that priest in your elementary school that gave kids free massages, is a fickle beast. If there's no hype at all, the game gets no attention, sales are bad, and the game may die before it even gets a chance to drag you off into that back room and show you the light of Jesus, open you up to a whole new way of thinking. If there's too much hype, then player expectation skyrockets. Sales are amazing at first, you get indoctrinated, you're initially hooked, but slowly, the legendary pants get unequipped and you slowly start to realize that the game's just not packing the kind of equipment that you were initially led to believe it was. Worst part is that most of the time this isn't even the game's fault. They weren't trying to mislead you, at least not intentionally. To paraphrase another YouTuber who's been digging into this game for way longer than I have, we've been huffing on that copium for so long that it's beginning to put us into a delirious state of hopium. So let's just ruin your day and fix that a little bit with some brass tacks and red flags. I don't want you going in thinking that this game is just gonna fix your parents' divorce, because it's not, because it was your fault. So first and foremost, Ashes of Creation started on Kickstarter of all places. Now this doesn't immediately doom the game, but MMOs that started here have really had a rough time of it. Off the top of my head, I can't name a single breakthrough MMORPG that started on Kickstarter that didn't end up being a scam, being stuck in a permanent state of alpha with no reprieve, or is just, you know, deader than those kids who trespassed on my property last week. Luckily though, AOC has already hopped this border fence, but it's just a reminder that the devs are playing a high risk, high reward game with you. These guys are powered on hopes and dreams, and the excessive amounts of stuff that they put in the cosmetic store. Which leads me to my next point. Damn, will you look at all those cosmetics. Now, I don't know exactly how much development time and resources are being dedicated to cranking out skins in the cash shop, but it's obviously a fairly large endeavor. Keep in mind, we're still not at Alpha 2 yet. The game hasn't released, but that cosmetic cash shop has been active since 2017. And like I said, even at a cursory glance, it's pretty easy to tell exactly how much energy went into these amazing looking skins. And it's pretty good news for the people who are interested in supporting this game and buying these packs, but only if they end up loving the game they get at the end of all of this. See, it's not so great news for the players who've bought a bunch of skins, they get to launch day, and the game is just not what they imagined or not what they wanted in the first place. And admittedly, this is a small minor gripe, but if you think that visual progression is gonna be a thing in Ashes of Creation, I've got a few bridges to sell you. The next problem is another double-edged sword. Ashes of Creation is planning to be highly player reliant. And to be honest, that sounds pretty awesome. The economy, the buildings, the way the land is even shaped is all up to the players. 
but that also opens us up to a few large scale vulnerabilities. If it just so happens that there are not enough players on a single server, then the server automatically dies, unless they're introducing something really complex like dynamic population scaling mechanics, which is just highly unlikely. Solo players are likely going to be screwed over fairly hard, but that's not anything new for MMOs in general, to be honest. Playing an MMO as a solo player is, well, it's just automatically handicapping yourself. But it will be interesting to see to what degree these players get handicapped. And finally, because of these player-driven systems, griefing may become a really big part of this game. People have this really weird notion and mentality that if there's no in-game incentive to be a griefer, to behave like an asshole to others, that it's not gonna happen. But what they don't understand is that, well, some men just wanna watch the world burn. See, for a little while in the past, I was a griefer and I'm gonna be honest with you, it's pretty fucking awesome. See, the griefing itself is its own reward to the players who engage in it. And really, there's nothing you can really do to discourage or dissuade people from behaving like this without changing some core fundamental mechanic in your game. Generally, the only way to get rid of griefers is to just go full scorched earth on anything they were using to ruin other people's play sessions. To help you understand, let's quote one of the greatest griefers of all time. After yet again pulling off one of the world's most devastating exploits of no clipping his way through the Great Wall of China, just to prove he could. Lol. Lamao, even. The final big problem I see with Ashes of Creation is that it's going to be incredibly complex to get right. Now, increasing complexity always leads to increasing points of failure, and it just leads to a higher likelihood of something going wrong or player exploiting something that they shouldn't be able to. It's almost a given that when Ashes launches, there will be exploits, bugs, and flaws that have been overlooked. And if they're bad enough, Ashes will see the same great exodus of players that New World did not so long ago. All it really takes is one player to stack up all those little mistakes in just the right combination to make the game unplayable for other people. I mean, technically speaking, don't go out and do this by the way, you can collapse an entire game's economy with the use of an integer overflow if you know what you're doing. And this doesn't even begin to touch on how many bots this game will have, but that's just inevitable. There's bots everywhere in every single MMO these days that's just par for the course at this point. Now, I'm not saying all of this because I hate what Intrepid Studios is doing or building, or that I want them to fail or something stupid like that. Quite the opposite, actually. I really hope these guys succeed. All I'm trying to do here is temper your expectations a little bit. Think about it this way, if the game is overhyped and amazing, it will still be a disappointment to players because what they expected is just not what they got in the final product. But if players are aware of the game's existence and it's underhyped, then come launch day, all those players who love the game will automatically become free advertising because it's all they can talk about. Word of mouth advertising like that is not something you can buy with money. So end of the day, Ashes of Creation is looking great so far. It's in a really good position. We've got devs who really care about the genre. We've got an entire community building around it. We've got the node systems. We've got these unique weather dynamic effects, so on and so forth. But I just want you to remember this. Good games with good devs deserve criticism because those good devs will take their good game and make it into something great. Bad games with bad devs deserve criticisms because then you know not to waste your time on whatever garbage fire they've thrown out into your face and expected you to pay for. The trick though is knowing when the whole is greater than the sum of its parts and the whole being destroyed is the one between your ass cheeks because you went and spent a bunch of money on a piece of garbage that you know, it's not even fun. Now let's forget about this whole video, get overhyped for this game and argue in the comments about it. As always, big thank to my subscribers, both old and new. And a special thank to the Hype Assassination Squad who ensure that I get to eat a whole slice of bread this month in this shattered economy. And who also get to watch these videos before anyone else. Still working on bigger stuff while cranking more of these out, so more content soon. Bye.